As part of this video, I will be closely looking at the development of film and cinema over the years. I will include examples of these in order to make things easier to understand, and I'll also be looking at the work of people such as Edward Mybridge, the Lumia Brothers, and so on. I'll be exploring how their ideas and inventions have influenced the evolution of cinema and comparing each idea or device with today's technology. A magic lantern was basically an early relative of the motion picture projector. It contained a light source that was positioned in front of a mirror. This light source would have been a candle or oil lamp in the 16th century, which then got upgraded to limelight, which is also known as calcium light in the 1870s, and finally, when they were invented in the 1890s, electric lights. So the mirror behind the light source would have made sure all of the light was being focused through glass sheets, projecting whatever is drawn or written on them. Unlike today, people didn't have televisions that they could depend on for entertainment. The magic lantern was a way for people to tell stories and pass on messages. It was even used by priests to put the fear of God into people, and they'd do this by projecting images of demons and the devil, scaring the audience into being more committed to religion. This was a starting point for the world of film and cinema as people began to pay to see the magic lantern shows, and they became more and more intrigued by the interesting visuals. In 1843, William George Horner invented the zoetrope, a device that creates the illusion of moving pictures. It's a cylinder with a long strip of images along the inside of it, with several slots evenly placed around it. This is so when it spins, the person can see through the slots and the quick flow of images will look like a moving image. Similar to the zoetrope, the praxinoscope was invented 34 years later by Charles Reynolds. The praxinoscope became more popular than the zoetrope and later replaced it completely. The way the device was laid out made it easier for the person to see the moving images. There was a large cylinder that had images wrapped around the inside and a smaller cylinder in the centre that was covered with mirrors. As the outside cylinder spins, the images are reflected onto the mirrors, giving the illusion of movement. The first photograph ever was taken in 1926 or 1927 by this guy, whose name I cannot pronounce. He was a French inventor, mainly credited for a successful photograph, earning him the right to be called the inventor of photography itself. Even though he succeeded in taking a photograph, it required several days of exposure, and the first results were hard to make out, but nonetheless, he captured an image for the first time ever. Edward Mybridge, whose real name was Edward James Muggeridge, was and still is one of the most iconic people when it comes to the development of film and cinema. Mybridge was born on 9th of April in 1830. He was an English photographer who was well known for his studies of motion, and he even proved that horses could fly. He was hired by a racehorse owner and businessman, Leland Stanford, to see and prove whether all four of a horse's feet left the ground at any point while it's galloping. Most people always thought that one foot was always on the ground. However, Mybridge managed to prove them wrong. As he attempted to settle Stanford's question, he took continuous photos as the horse ran. Then he adjusted and improved his camera in order to have a faster shutter speed. After adjusting his camera, he then produced a negative with all the shots in them. And in one of the shots, all of the horse's feet were in the air. French engineers Auguste and Louis Lumière were two of the most influential people in the world of film. They introduced the cinematograph in 1895, a device that was capable of filming, developing and even projecting a reel of film. At the time it was considered to be a far more advanced device than any other anyone had ever seen. They made their own films that featured the everyday lives of people including workers exiting a factory and what goes on at a train station. Before films were edited, they were just short films that consisted of a single shot. The motion within the shot was all there was to amuse or entertain the audience. They showed simple activities such as bustling crowds on a busy street and traffic within a city. There wasn't really a story and the film lasted as long as there was film in the camera, so there was only a limited amount of footage that they were able to capture at the time. In 1898, British film pioneer Robert William Paul made a film titled Come Along Do, which was one of the very first films to feature more than one shot. This form of editing was to create continuity and involve action by moving from one sequence into another. In Paul's film, the first shot is of an elderly couple having lunch outside an art exhibition. They follow their people, other pe 